Yeah, I got a mask. I'll just put it on. I was just getting this set up first. Because of who you are. And I will ask you to also remember Brianna Taylor, who was home and not safe. And she was killed by people who were supposed to be protecting her. I also want you to remember a young woman who was indigenous.
And I'm going to put in closing at the end too. So miigwech and miigwech for your strength and your courage for being here.
远大和同情周围领导，而又不先责和反对仇恨的时候，后果是我们的社区要面对的。我们不是永远的外国人，我们也不是模范少数民族，我们是加拿大人。
to all by providing casing days and ensuring migrants have access to permanent status. What we do not need is more funding for police and further criminalization and policing of our community. Anti-Asian racism is one aspect of white supremacy. And we are in solidarity with black, indigenous, Muslim, and other community of color in our collective fight for liberation. Affected our work. We can only 
mind against racism. 在这里，我们要念出姐妹们的心声。Now we want to read the messages from our sisters who are not able to join us today. Linda 说，我们的工作是被社会需要的。我们应该在安全的环境下工作。做女性真的很不容易，又要养家工作，还要面对客人和警察的压力。Linda said, "Our job is necessary for the society. We should be able to work in a safe environment. It's not easy for a woman to be the breadwinner and face the pressure from the customers and police at the same time." Jenny 说，我们用自己双双手创造生活。被欺负的姐妹，我们一定一起起身反抗，讲种族歧视，消除种族歧视。Jenny said, "We use our own hands to feed ourselves, sisters. We have to stand up and fight against racism and discrimination." Lucy 说，不管我在按摩院。
know what? I will never forget the three of the Korean women who died. They lived where they worked, but they died there. We've got to change this, and it's not about more police. Policing has never prevented white supremacist violence. We need to defund the police. in every corner to my Asian sisters in particular, both cisgender and non-binary, I see you. This is the time we come together in rage and grief and with love. These hateful attacks and these killings will not do to us what they intended. We will not be silenced, we will not disappear, and we will not be isolated. We will take this time to resist violence in all its forms build solidarity across movements for racial and economic justice. Thank you. My name is Carol Wall. I am a labor community activist, and I've added to that abolitionist. I come into this space as a fourth generation African Canadian woman with my ancestors and my sister Tiki and Carol. I am not alone. I stand tall because I stand on their shoulders and, with, and in solidarity with the Asian community.
to uphold white supremacy. Rise up, abolitionists. Rise up. We've got work to do. I would like to introduce Anapayan, sorry, Anapayan, Toronto, a National Democratic Filipino youth group based here who are going to perform for us. Good afternoon, everybody. Magandang hapon. We are also Bayan Toronto, Bagong Alianza Makabayan, or New Patriotic Alliance which is an alliance of progressive Filipino um, organizations. Um, we at Bayan Toronto mourn and stand in solidarity with the Asian American and Canadian communities, especially working class immigrants and other oppressed and exploited peoples in imperialist countries like the US and Canada. Through this grief and rage, we must unite and organize with collective action, like what we are doing today. We must continue to fight against injustices such as racism and white supremacy built under U.S. imperialism. And for our cultural, we will be reading a poem called The Women in My Hometown by Tony De Jesus. The women in my hometown, they carry the story of my country. Time was when women lined the rivers and washed the clothes every day and dried them under the scorching sun. With brooms and rags, they swept and polished windows and floors and made white, thin, white, made white the walls. All day, they prepared food with songs to keep healthy their loved ones. Sticks and trowels, they weeded the fields, kept rice paddies fresh ready for seeds, shooed away the flocks of birds until they harvested all the rice grains governed and administered the tribes, healed and comforted the wounded and sick, presided over religious rites, they led their people to the gods. Then came mighty ships from over the seas, all were to give tribute to the powers that be. Women, patience is your virtue, do all that we tell you to do. Allowed to read, they, they devoured all the pages, awakened in their minds and senses the other world beyond their shores. In patience, they nurtured the struggle. In 1896, the struggle let loose. The silenced women spoke out in rows, down with the colonialists of the West. Let us struggle and become our own best. Alas, the women faced another ruler in the very deceiving imperialists of the North. The feudal culture was reinforced with grandiose values of Hollywood. A century of resistance remained alive amongst all women, peasants, and professionals to struggle against bureaucrat capitalists, imperialists, and feudal puppets. The women in my hometown survived all the centuries of oppression, but forced out by poverty and labor export policy of a rotting system, by the thousands they left in search of livelihood. Gone to 186 countries around the world, set aside their professional degrees, had to accept jobs at all levels to make survive families and relatives. Toiling in all sizes of toilets and kitchens on foot all day long in sweatshop conditions, not even a whisper of complaint is allowed to be mentioned. In silence, they remembered expecting families back home. Suffered in their hearts as male older brides, walked head high as sold entertainers, imprisoned for unknown and unjust causes. Every day, several come home in unmarked boxes. The woman in my hometown saw the glory of an early society and simplicity, resisted imperialist domination and subjugation. Today, they continue the struggle towards liberation, for the freedom to live in harmony and peace, to express themselves through nature's bounty, a hometown and a nation to build, generation upon generation to provide. Listen, listen to the women in my hometown. They tell the history of my country. They, they cry for nothing more but justice. Down with imperialism, bureaucrat capitalism, and feudalism. Long live the Filipino people. Long live the Filipino women. Long
everyone to wear masks and keep social distancing. And next, I'm going to choose. The, I'm going to introduce Ling Deutsche Kobayashi, who is going to represent the National Association of Japanese Canadians Toronto chapter to read their solidarity statement. online, I know there are a lot of you. And a big thanks to the rally organizers. This is really a, a fantastic gathering. And aren't we lucky that it, the, the spring has stopped? So the National Association of Japanese Canadians was formed in Toronto for in 1947. So we're almost 75 years old. And the reason it was founded here was to address human rights against Canadians of Japanese descent. And the Toronto chapter remains committed to this original purpose. Well, I took part in the 2017 Women's March on Washington, the largest single day protest in US history. Like Japanese Americans, Japanese Canadians were shocked to hear the words Muslim ban. It reminded us of the over 145,000 citizens of Japanese descent across the Americas who were incarcerated and exiled. Well, women showed up in force that day because of the misogyny, racism, and discrimination that characterized that 2016 presidential campaign. So given the combination of race, gender, and a culture of gun violence, the murders of eight people, six Asian women, was shocking but understandable. And we deeply mourn their loss and grieve with their families, friends, and communities. I love Toronto. I believe in Toronto, despite the fact that my grandparents and parents who were forcibly uprooted from BC could not resettle in Toronto because there was a time that there were quotas and bans preventing Japanese Canadians from living here. So that's one example of why anti-Asian racism in Canada is not new. So two messages were drummed into me by my mother. Never judge a person by the work they do. Because when Japanese Canadians arrived here in the East, not being allowed to go back to British Columbia, they lost businesses, property, and farmland and they were forced to do whatever it took to put food on the table. Now her second message was exercise your right to vote because Japanese Canadians were denied the vote until 1949. And for the record, other Asian Canadians were only allowed to vote two years earlier. So let's act in solidarity to fight anti-Asian racism and all hate as one spoke in the Wheel of Momentum to strengthen Canada, one city at a time. Words matter, leadership matters, and we are here today to embolden hope, not hate. Thank you very much. introduce two Asian Canadian women elected politicians. We wanted to elevate Asian Canadian and especially women voices in politics. Please welcome Kristen Wong Tam, City Councillor, Toronto Centre. so much and experienced so much 
Our community is literally under attack. We will not stand for that. We will fight back. I'm so proud to be here and I want to say thank you to the organizers who brought us together to give us an opportunity to mourn, but also to raise our voices, to rise up where we can and make sure that we are counted. I want to recognize that our elected officials are also here from City Council. My colleagues, Cynthia Like, City Councilor from Scarborough, mm. Shelley Carroll, as well as Councilor Mike Layton. Can you please give them a round of applause? that was scrawled on public infrastructure on the wall of a private building. And the words were, go home, chink. Well, guess what? We are home. I'm a proud Chinese Canadian. I'm a patriot. And my ancestors have been in this country since 1788. For over 230 years, we have been building this nation giving what we can to the foundation of Canada. And we have recognized and acknowledged the hatred and pain and the genocide that have been toiled and faced and directed at Indigenous people. And we stand in solidarity with them. So yes, Canada is not perfect. And we are not going anywhere. We are going to stand and we are going to make sure that we are counted. I see lots of amazing signs out there, and you are ha you clearly have a message to deliver. Raise your signs, people. Show them. Show them what you want to say. Say it out loud. Stop Asian hate. Stop Asian hate. Stop Asian hate. our voice and stand and rise when we need to. We will not stay silent when we see something and we will demand more of our elected officials. You can demand more of me. We have been blamed. We have been blamed for a coronavirus. The hatred that we are experiencing and the racist violence that we are seeing is because they are scapegoating us. That is so wrong, not to mention scientifically <laughs> untrue. So we're going to fight them with truth. We're going to fight them with facts. And we're going to tell them that we are not a virus and it's not our fault. And for all those elected officials out there, I know that you are there. I'm sorry if I can't see and recognize all of you, but I want to just say a, a message to you. You have to get louder. You have to speak up for us. You have to say it's not a Chinese virus and it's not our fault. <laughs> Violence is being perpetuated against the Chinese Canadian East Asian community because we are being blamed for this. And as much as Donald Trump had a megaphone that the whole world could hear, we, elected officials, and all of you as supporters and the extended family, we need to get loud. We need to say it frequently. We need to say it loudly. It is not our fault. We will not stand for it. We cannot stand for it. I will end on this note, and I want to just make sure that we do not ever lose this message. We have to recognize that racism is, racism is pervasive and deep-rooted. We need to approach racism with an intersectional lens. Racism is multidimensional, and racism 
can also manifest itself in gendered racial violence. The violence that was directed at those women is because you know they were Asian. They were actively sought out and hunted down and killed because of their gender. Brothers, my brothers, I need you. Your sisters need you to make sure you stand up and always say something. It is our collective responsibilities, each and every single one of us. We will not be silent. We will not stop marching. We will not ever, ever, ever be silent. This is our country. This is our city. We belong here. We are. Of systemic anti-Asian racism. 
racism. And you know what? We feel it. I have personally felt it. I'm sure many of you have felt it. And so, I ask all of you today to let this rally not be the one thing you do, but let it be the beginning. Let it be the beginning of the work that we do on ourselves, with our families and friends, our social circles. Speak up. Being silent is not an option. Speak up.
form of direct action. It cannot end here. Our work does not end here today. Our work has to go on. We urge you to join us in further actions to combat racism, misogyny, and oppression. This is what we want you to do. You can help by calling on your elected officials from all three levels of government for four things. One, concretely fund community-led organizations that do the anti-racism education, who can support victims of racist attacks and prevent the spread of misinformation and hate on media and social media. Two, use an intersectionality approach to see that anti-Asian and all forms of racism happens to those who are most vulnerable, like women, the old, the young, low income, low English fluency, frontline workers, those without permanent immigration status, LGBTQ plus community members, and those facing mental health issues. Three, for a just recovery support strategy for small businesses, like restaurants and grocery stores, so that small businesses are equipped to respond to racist attacks. Four, finally, for the protection for all workers, that all workers have access to paid sick days, and ensure that status on arrival so that all migrants and people with precarious immigration status are protected. You can support, also, Butterfly's eight demands. One, Full decriminalization of sex work. Two, recognize sex work is work. Three, rights, not rescue and stop policing. Four, sex work, not trafficking. Stop conflating sex work with human trafficking. Five, fight racism, sexism, classism, and horophobia. Six, no cops at workplaces. Seven, status for all. And eight, guarantee access without fear to all government services. Our organizations also need your support. You can donate online to CCNCSJ, CCNC Toronto, and Butterfly. Or you can join us in many, many of our actions against racism, against misogyny, and against oppression. There are 5,000 people here today. And we are going to count on you, not only today, but tomorrow and after. Thank you very much. Thank you.
concludes our program. Marshals, please stay put until the crowd disperses. Thank you, everyone. Solidarity! <laughs> Marshals, once the crowd disperses, please bring your vests forward.